For more debates, updates, and bonus clips, sign up at thebigconversation.show. This is, I think, the 70th anniversary year of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Peter. And um, I was just looking it up the other day, and Article 1 states, All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They're endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. I mean, do you fundamentally agree with that? Or would you put it a different way? Or would you say, no, I don't think that's quite how it works? Um, it depends how we're supposed to take this, right? If we're supposed to take this as a kind of ringing declaration of things that uh, we want to put out there and hold up in some way as a general principle, um, then I don't uh, really have an objection to it. It may do quite a lot of good. But if we were to think of it as philosophers and to take it uh, carefully and go through it word by word and analyze it, um, then I don't think that it is actually right. Um, and also, of course, it is, as you say, a declaration of human rights. And as such, it tends to exclude, uh, well, it does exclude non-human animals mm. and uh, claims that all humans have dignity uh, tend to imply that non-humans don't have the same kind of dignity that humans do. And I think that's not defensible either. Mm. Perhaps, perhaps we should look at this term dignity for a, a start yes, and, yes. and say all humans are supposed to have this, whatever it means, right? So all humans includes those who are, let's, let's say, anencephalics, right? Um, an anencephalic is an infant born uh, with only brain stem, with essentially with, with no cortex, with no capacity for consciousness. An anencephalic will not smile at his or her mother, won't recognize his or her mother, um, presumably is not capable of experiencing or feeling anything at all. But that is a human being, mm. you know, same chromosomes and mm. so on. Uh, now compare that with uh, a chimpanzee or a horse or, you know, choose your favorite non-human animal, mm. if you like. Why should we think that this human who can have no experiences um, has more dignity than the, the, the chimpanzee or, mm. the, or the horse or the dog who can respond in so many complex ways to their so, environment? So essentially you, you would contest the statement quite simply, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. There, there are some- of the all, yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there are uh, exceptions. And, and right. there are exceptions to that. And so in the sense that, that you, you couldn't, philosophically speaking, put your name to that, that kind of a, a declaration. You've done quite a bit of work on the idea of, of human rights. Yeah, I mean, I mean, let me say a couple of things. One thing by way of response to, to Peter, but then flesh out my own thinking. I mean, I think what's interesting is, on the other hand, I think, Peter, while you you know take examples of human beings who are born profoundly disabled, I still think you'd recognize they had a degree of dignity there. Because I think you'd, if you met a parent of a child who was born like that, who was proposing not just committing infanticide, but then chopping the corpse into little bits and frying them on the barbecue and uh, having them with a salad, you'd think that in some way some, that, 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 there was, that there'd been a, p a failure of moral reasoning there to recognize that, in the, that even in that tragedy, there's a degree of dignity. But I think that the confusion around extreme disability is actually something what's it's interesting if you look at some of the great kind of ethicists throughout the centuries people like Hobbes Locke can't argue that I can't argue the same thing that the equality that we're talking about is not grounded in, a, in an ability that you have or you don't have because that of course leads to a sliding scale that says well okay maybe we say that the rationality is what grants people you know inclusion in the moral community well you're a brilliant philosopher if we you know put you up next to justin and uh, we have to make a choice justin may not be part I, of our i'd be mince me yeah you would be mince me <laughs> we could just say there's a there's a minimal threshold which just we passes. could <laughs> we could go that route or we could go the route that hobbs and kant and others and i think even actually even some of the great utilitarian thinkers sort of flirted around with that it's actually our capacities uh, that are essential that are morally relevant. And I want to say something here about animal rights, Justin, because mm. it was mentioned earlier on. That's a, that's a passion uh, for me as well. And aside from the areas we'll disagree on, I think one thing I want to say that I hugely uh, respect Peter for is that, that your book uh, on animal liberation put animal rights and the way that we treat uh, non-human creatures onto the table in a way that other books haven't. And so even though we may disagree on some things philosophically, I think you did a tremendous amount of good. What I would say, though, in terms of animal rights and, the treat and justice for the animal kingdom, I want to say that's actually grounded in human dignity because I have a duty to, to, to the animal kingdom to treat it a particular way. Now, if we're dealing with a higher form of life, such as a pig or a chimpanzee, I think that duty is there. But I would extend that and say that even if I treated something that didn't have sentience wrong uh, in a way that was ill, or if I went out and, for example, set fire to vast tracts of rainforest, uh, you know, plant life isn't sentient unless you follow one or two extreme philosophers. I have still 
behaved submorally. I have behaved in a way that's uh, inappropriate towards that aspect of the natural world. But that's grounded in my duty that flows from my from my human nature, not in some sort of hypothetical set of rights that the entity out here has. So I think we might in some ways... Whereas whereas you do think that your duties to the anencephalic are grounded in in some rights? I I think that it's again grounded in duty. I think that... So so you don't think there's a distinction then between the anencephalic and the pigs or the chimpanzees? No, I think the human... I think that I I come back to where Justin put the question to you. I think that all human beings, uh, whether they have the capabilities or they don't, belong to the human family and with that come rights and dignity. So I would agree with the UDHR, but then I would ground animal rights, which is what uh, you're also famous for, I would ground that in the same basis on the same platform, because ultimately, you and I know that I have a moral duty to the wolf, if the wolf, if a wolf breaks in here and eats one of the three of us, or Liam Neeson, as in the film <laughs> The Grey, the wolf hasn't actually acted immorally, it has no duties to us. Well, because we the wolf doesn't have the capacity to make those choices, and that's why I would say, I would agree that the wrongdoing of the various acts you described, whether it's burning the rainforest or torturing a cat or um, doing something to to humans, is grounded in the fact that we have the capacity to make choices and to th- think what those choices are. So, so we have moral agency, um, I would say, rather than rather, uh, rather than our dignity. I'd say is what it's mm. grounded in, um, and the wolf lacks moral agency. The wolf just behaves as a wolf, I guess, sees something it can eat and goes ahead and tries to kill it and eat it. Uh, So yes, there is a distinction between uh, those humans capable of moral agency, which of course is not all humans, no no babies are capable of moral agency, Mm. um, and uh, non-human animals. But that's, I think, a, a, a different question from the question of whether in terms of how we ought to treat them, we ought to put all humans, including the anencephalic, on a kind of higher plane by saying that they have rights that the others don't. And I think that's what the Universal Declaration of Human Rights Mm. is trying to do. 